Good evening, I'm Praram Badhal. Let's begin with the main stories. 17 passengers of the ill-fated aircraft of Soria Airlines found to have been allowed to board the plane without keeping records. Family members of the deceased say they will not receive the bodies until compensations are decided. Government yet to find those involved in the rape and murder of Nirmala Pantha of Kanchanpur despite the lapse of six years since her death. More plight for the family members with assurances from each government formed in the period. Civil Service Administration to be led by a woman for the first time. Council of Ministers decides to appoint Leela Devi Gartola as the Chief Secretary. Shivaraz Adhikari appointed Deputy Chair of National Planning Commission. And Nepal Women's National Cricket Team return following participation at the ACC Women's Asia Cup. Need for additional investment and international exposure identified. Family members of those deceased in the crash of the aircraft of Soria Airlines have said that they will not receive the body of their family members until compensations are decided. Meanwhile, post-mortem of all 18 bodies from the crash has concluded. At the discussion with Minister for Culture, Tourism and Civil Aviation, Badri Pandey, and Accountable Manager of Soria Airlines, Gopal Bhattarai, family members of those deceased in the aircraft said they would not receive the bodies until the issues they have raised are clarified and compensations are decided. They also shared grievances on the families being informed in the evening despite the unfortunate crash at around 11 in the morning. After listening to the grievances of the family members of those killed, Minister Pandey shared assurances of identifying facts about the crash. He also shared the government commitment of ensuring compensations. Discussions on the demands raised by the family members are to be held with the CAN and the representatives of Soria Airlines tomorrow as well. Meanwhile, the Thrivan University Teaching Hospital has said that bodies of those deceased will be handed over to the family members from 4 p.m. tomorrow. The health condition of Manish Ratna Shakya, the captain of the ill-fated Soria Airlines passenger plane, is reported to be improving. Kathmandu Medical College Director Dr. Meena Thapa informed Kantipur Television that Shakya has been transferred from the intensive care unit for remaining treatment after his condition improved. The hospital issued a press release and informed that his wounds had been tended to yesterday. During the incident, Shakya had one of his backbone and three left ribs broken. According to Director Dr. Thapa, Shakya said that the plane went out of control after reaching a height of 50 to 100 meters. The government has formed a committee to investigate yesterday's crash of the ill-fated aircraft of Soria Airlines at the Thrivan International Airport. The committee will identify the cause of the crash. Meanwhile, it has been found that except for the crew members, the 17 passengers were allowed to board the aircraft without keeping any record or conducting any security check. Despite being identified as the technical staff of the airlines, the details have not been kept in the record of the airport while all security mechanisms were violated. 18 people on board the aircraft of Soria Airlines, which was to fly to Pokhara for a sea check, died in the crash yesterday. Cause of the crash will be identified by the investigation committee formed by the government. However, it has been found that none of the technical staff on board the aircraft were issued their boarding pass. According to sources at the Thrivan International Airport, it took around an hour to identify those on board the aircraft. While the airport issued permit for the flight to Pokhara, none of the airport mechanisms were informed about the passengers in the aircraft. Sources at the security department inside the airport have said that Soria Airlines had directly taken the technical staff members to the aircraft from its office inside the airport. Security check, even of the cabin crew, is mandatory before boarding an aircraft. According to a security officer inside the airport, airline service providers can fly their technical staff, but no entity can violate the security provisions. Not issuing the boarding pass for the 17 passengers other than the cabin crew and not conducting the security check has raised serious questions on the leadership of the Civil Aviation Authority of Nepal. Soria Airlines had informed that all passengers on board the aircraft were its employees, but security officers have questioned about what would have happened if a terrorist had boarded the aircraft in the disguise of a staff. While the airline company has violated the aviation safety protocol, CAN and the airport management department are also under the scope of investigation and action as they allow the passengers to board the aircraft without recording their details. Whether it be the pretext of failure in ensuring timely efforts to extinguish the blaze from the fire engines or any other reason, former AIG Bigyan Raj Sharma has said that actions must be taken also against CAN if errors are discovered and proven. 
Questions have also been raised against the leadership of Ken at the Parliamentary Committee. An official of the Ministry of Home Affairs has said that yesterday's unfortunate incident was a consequence of the irresponsible act of the department responsible for managing the airport. Pressure has intensified to file cases against the officials of the authority for violating the airport security mechanisms by allowing family members of the technical staff to board the aircraft as employees of the airline. Parliamentarians have also called for suspension of the Director General of the CAN. While the cause of yesterday's crash must be identified, failure to take actions against the airlines and the government officials for violating the airport security mechanism will raise serious questions against the state. Saying a grave error by the Civil Aviation Authority of Nepal had led to the death of 18 people on board the ill-fated aircraft of Soria Airlines, which crashed yesterday, parliamentarians have recommended suspension of the Director General of the Civil Aviation Authority of Nepal, CAN. At today's meeting of the Parliament's International Affairs and Tourism Committee, parliamentarians raised questions regarding allowing non-technical person and a child on board the aircraft, which is being sent to Pokhara for its sea check. Officials of the authority have furnished unconvincing answers and tried to shy away from their responsibilities. At the meeting of the Parliament's International Relations and Tourism Committee, parliamentarians said that the authority had to shoulder the responsibility of allowing non-technical person and a child to board the ill-fated aircraft. The parliamentarians said that unauthorized individuals were allowed to enter the aircraft and that the rescue mechanism had been compromised. They also demanded suspension of the Director General of the Authority until all facts related to the crash were discovered. Nepali airline service providers have been blacklisted by the European Union for almost 11 years. Seeing the crash of the aircraft of Soru Airlines sent an even worse message, the parliamentarians alleged the authority of being the main entity responsible for it. The parliamentarians recommended the government to form a separate regulating entity for airline service providers by introducing an ordinance if it was required. Some parliamentarians also expressed concern regarding the conflict of interest of some members of the investigation committee formed by the government. Despite grilling from the parliamentarians, the officials of the authority did not furnish satisfactory answers. The committee summoned the officials of the CAN after 18 people died in yesterday's crash of the aircraft of Soria Airlines. After serious discussions at the committee, the issue has also been prioritized by national and international media. As the international media have raised serious questions about Nepal's airports and aviation safety, it has already been late for the Minister for Civil Aviation, Padri Pandey, to hold a press conference to inform and assure the international community about the safety of the aviation sector of Nepal. It has been six years since 13-year-old Nirmala Ponto of Ulta Khama of Vimdata Municipality, Kanchanpur, was raped and murdered. While returning home from a friend Roshni Bam's house on 26th of July 2018, six years ago, Nirmala was raped while her body was recovered the next morning from the river banks in Sallaghari. Nirmala's family have spent the past six years hoping for justice while the perpetrators have yet to be identified. Another child, Sonny Khuna, had lost his life during the clash that had erupted, citing the authority had failed to identify the perpetrator. The rape and murder of Nirmala Ponta has remained a mystery for six years. District Police Office Kansanpur has said that the case was being investigated from several angles. Pending Raiko Mukta, Babu Karalika Dakri, Esma Honsundan Zaricha, Ara Amlipuni to Pilejani, Niali Rekasun, Presta Mudaru, Pending Mudaru, Arubun, Tirim Darsan, Temudaruku, Amlichi, follow up on the Kamsego. 
Several governments that had been formed during this period had given assurances of identifying the perpetrators and taking strong actions against them. However, justice has remained elusive so far. In our Public Voice segment, we have asked why they think has the investigation into the rape and murder of Nirmala Pontha not concluded despite the lapse of six years. Let us now take a look at what they had to say. जसो अपराधहरुमा ठुला ठालो व्यक्तिहरुको संलग्नता हुने र त्यसले गर्दा प्रमाणहरु लुकाइने जो राजनीतिक छत्र छायामा बसेका व्यक्ति हुन्छन् राजनीतिक पहुँचमा हुन्छन् उनीहरुबाट भएको अपराधहरु चाहिँ खासै बाहिर आउने गर्दैन राजनीतिक दबाबका कारण र उनीहरुको संरक्षणमा भइरहेका जुन गतिविधिहरु छन् उनीहरुले विभिन्न संरक्षण पाएको आधारमा एस्ता अझै दोहोरिने पनि सम्भावना देखिन्छ सरकारको नियम कानून कमजोर भएको कारणले सब यो राजनीतिको खेल जस्तो लाग्छ सरकारले राम्रोसँग अनुसन्धान नगर्देर ठुले मान्छेका मन्त्रीको छोरा भडिजा आ नाटक होतल भाइ सानो मान्छेले त्यसु सानो मान्छे त पुगिरिहान्थ्यो सरकारले राम्रोसँग अनुसन्धान गर्न सकेन त्यही भएर प्रमाण नष्ट भइसकेपछि अब त्यो पछि झन् जटिल जटिल हुँदै गयो त्यै नै हो अनुसन्धान प्रक्रिया चाहिँ सोई दिशा तिर नगएर मोडिनु का कारणहरुले पनि बैंगरि ढंगले अनुसन्धान गर्ने प्रणाली नहुँदा खेरि यो अनुसन्धान धेरै लम्बिएर गयो राज्यको जुन संयन्त्रहरुले स्वतन्त्र रूपमा चाहिँ छानबिन गर्न नसकेको निकै माथिल्लो तहमा रहेका व्यक्तिहरुका परिवार अथवा आफन्त त्यसमा संलग्न भएको यो चाहिँ अब राज्यको नै गल्ती हो किनभने अब यति यत्रो भइसक्यो 6 6 वर्ष भइसक्यो अहिलेसम्म एउटा दोषीलाई पत्ता लगाउन सकेको छैन कुनै व्यक्तिबाट दबाब भएर त्यो दोषी पत्ता लाग्न नसकेको हो राज्य संयन्त्र जहाँ अनुसन्धान गर्ने क्रममा हो जहाँ अनुसन्धान गर्नुपर्ने हो त्यो बेला राज्य भिन नियन्त्रणकोमा लाग्यो अनि त्यो बेला उले दोषी उम्किन मौका पायो द गभर्नमेन्ट हेज अपोइन्टेड लीला देवी गर्थौला एज द चीफ सेक्रेटरी Today's meeting of the Council of Ministers has decided to appoint Acting Chief Secretary Gortola as the Chief Secretary. She is the first woman to be appointed as the Chief Secretary of Civil Service in the country. Having entered the Civil Service as Section Officer in the Nepal year 2050 to BS, Gortola's term will conclude on the end of August. She is set to retire on grounds of age limit on 31st of August. Today's meeting of the Council of Ministers has also appointed Shivaraj Adhikari as the Deputy Chairperson of the National Planning Commission. Arati Bichar, Ramesh Prasad Singh, Prakash Kumar Shrestha, Geeta Kumari Poudal Adhikari, Jay Bahadur Tandon and Ganga Dutta Vasti have been appointed as members at the National Planning Commission. Rashtriya Sudhendra Party has said that the controversial correspondence of Deputy Speaker Indira Rana Mawar to the Embassy of the United States of America did not create any harm but called for remaining aware politically. The party has also alleged the ruling coalition of raising the issue of the correspondence because of minority at the Constitutional Council. At today's meeting of the Central Committee, Acting Speaker of Rashtriya Sudhendra Party Manish Jha claimed that the allegations against Deputy Speaker Rana were politically motivated. Jha said that the correspondence was not registered at the U.S. Embassy, nobody was benefited from it, and that it had not created any negative impact. However, with no precedence of such correspondence from deputy speakers, Jha called for remaining alert politically. The meeting held at the party office has held discussions on the internal strategies of the party organization, upcoming programs, and future plans. Rashtriya Sudhendra Party has also decided to conduct a special campaign in Karnali. Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli-led government has a two-third majority at the parliament with the support of five French parties, of which only two parties are in the government. Prime Minister Oli gave full shape to the cabinet in one go, but while Tanata Samajwadi Party is leading two ministries and Lok Tandir Samajwadi Party one, Janamat Tanata Samajwadi Party Nepal and Nagarik Unmukti have yet to be included. Janamat has taken the leadership in Madhesh province. The remaining parties are looking to be a part of the government, considering the provision for three state ministers in federal government. Janamath has also maintained its demand of being included in the federal government, which for Nagarikun Mukti is secondary given intra-party dispute. Janata Samajwadi Party Nepal had demanded for the post of chief minister in Madhya province, but ruling alliance partners and two largest parties at the federal parliament, Nepali Congress and CPNUML, decided to hand it to Janamath. The two parties had initially decided to give at least one ministry of every party that supports the government. If that commitment is to be fulfilled, the government will need to shuffle the cabinet, call back some ministers and appoint new ones.
Time now for the international news. The United States of America has asked its nationals not to travel to Manipur, Jammu and Kashmir, the India-Pakistan border, and central and eastern parts of the country where Naxalites are active. The U.S. State Department has also expressed concern over the increasing activities of crime, terrorism, and Naxalism in India. Also stating that the risk has increased in some parts of India, the U.S. has placed India in level 2 category, while Jammu and Kashmir, India-Pakistan border, Manipur, central and eastern regions have been placed in the level 4 category. In view of the same issue, it has requested its citizens who are traveling to India not to travel to conflict-ridden areas. Sports News Nepal women's national cricket team have returned home after competing at the ACC Women's Asia Cup. The team led by Indu Verma landed at the Thiruvan International Airport after taking off from Sri Lanka today. The Nepali Eves crashed out from the group stage, but they put an end to their winless run at the Asia Cup. In their first group stage match, Samjan Akhatka's impressive innings of 72 not out helped Nepal defeat the United Arab Emirates by six wickets, which was Team Nepal's first ever win at the Asia Cup. And despite the morale-boosting win, Team Nepal failed to give continuity to the momentum in the two other matches. Nepal were thrashed by Pakistan by nine wickets and were humbled by India by 82 runs. It was Nepali women's team's third appearance at the Asia Cup. Prior to this, Nepal had participated at the tournament in 2012 and 2016. Under-20 women's volleyball team coach Kumar Rai has said that the team failed to achieve their target of winning the tournament in the Maldives because of lack of exposure. Returning home after finishing third at the Kava Under-20 Championship in the Maldives, Coach Rai said that the players who were competing at the court for the first time for the team were low on confidence. The Nepali Eves had defeated the Maldives in straight sets in the third place match. In the league stage, Nepal had suffered a four set defeat against Sri Lanka and a straight set defeat against Kyrgyzstan. Nepal gold medal was Team Nepal's journey to the final had ended after they lost to Kyrgyzstan in the semi-final. Players of the age group team have identified the need for regular training, tournaments and international exposure. It is now time for our segment Public Polls, where you text us with your opinion. Public Polls. Before we ask today's question, let us take a look at the result from yesterday's poll. Yesterday we were asked, what should be done to ensure the safety of Nepal's aviation sector? 29% were for A, efficient monitoring, 47% were for B, regular check of aircrafts, and 24% were for C, improvement in technology and infrastructure. And here is our today's question. What should be done to enhance the capacity of women athletes of Nepal? Your options are A. Increase sporting events, B. Increase investment, and C. Produce more athletes. The voting is on. Type NEWS, select your option A, B, or C, and send it to 34001. That is all for the moment. Up next is the news in Nepali. Thank you for staying with us. Goodbye for now.